Universities have a history of working with private industry to move technology and medicine into new territory. Wave Energy is no exception. The forerunner in the United States is Oregon State University in Corvallis. For the last several years, they have been developing prototypes of wave energy devices in cooperation with private energy companies, and the results have been amazing. And we're here in our energy systems lab. It's our Wallace Energy Systems and Renewables facility, and we are one of the highest power energy systems lab in any university of the nation. Now that's strictly for research here at the university, right? Well, we do a lot of research here, but we also use this lab to advance our undergraduate education as well. Why don't you take me down? Let's have okay, a look. Okay, sure. Because we've got a better view down here. Absolutely. Interesting point. You think wave energy is just simple. This gets really scientific. What we have here is our wave energy linear test bed. And this test bed is designed to create that relative linear motion between a central spar and a heaving float. And our focus has been to look at opportunities to convert that energy in that heaving wave directly into electrical energy. So this is a scale model of the enormous thing that's going to go off the coast, not too far from now. This is a scaled down version. Exactly. So you can generate and control the power that you're producing here. You have the ability to feed some of that power back to the grid. We do. And you can store energy here. Yes, that's right. This is a magnet assembly. And out in the ocean, okay, that magnet assembly would have a large float attached to the top. Mm -hmm. And when we tested this device out in the ocean, we had an 11 foot diameter float attached to the top, but we don't need it in the linear test bed. It attaches to the top of the magnet assembly, and then as that magnet assembly then heaves up and down in the wave, the spar is stationary, but this magnet assembly is heaving up and down, creating this changing magnetic field. Voltage is directly induced. When you look at wave energy and you look at the density, the density of water is about 832 times greater than the density of air. What that means is that we have the ability to extract more power from a smaller volume, which means subsequently lower costs. Do you think this is likely in time to be cheaper than the current available energy sources? Yes, and what we need to do is we need to see that volume increase, just as it did in wind, to bring that cost down. And to enable that, we need to help developers to be able to get their devices in the water. Two words. Why Oregon? You know, Oregon is really a sweet spot to develop and advance wave energy. As we look at our assets, first we're standing in our energy systems lab, one of the largest energy systems labs at any university in the nation. We've got our Hinsdale Wave Research Lab, some of the largest systems of wave basins in North America. Then we look at the actual wave energy potentials. It's always those west coasts of land masses that have the largest wave energy potentials because of our global winds that are going from west to east. To east. Okay, yeah. so now in addition to all of that, we have a tremendous electrical utility infrastructure along the coast because we used to have this very strong logging industry. Now, when that was demolished, you then have this available utility capacity where they can bring power directly onto the grid. So what about the environmental impacts? We've got like 20,000 whales that come up and down the coast here. I mean, what if one of those bonks its nose on this thing, it's gonna be sore, right? Absolutely. Might have a headache a little bit. We... Premature birth, anything. We Death, even. completely agree that all of these potential environmental impacts need to be explored. And we have top researchers, like specifically on the whale issue, uh, Dr. Bruce Mate, looking at potential, potentially using what's called acoustic avoidance systems, where you would have a wave installation and then you would implement acoustic avoidance in order to send signals that would cause the whales to go around these type of installations. Brilliant. Do you know what would really enthuse me is to see this thing actually operate? Excellent. So this is where we optimize the generator components. And then we bring it over to the Hinsdale Wave Research Lab, where they have a tsunami wave basin the size of an Olympic swimming pool. And we can test scaled prototypes. And in fact, right now, they're testing 133rd scale devices in an array. 
a five device array. And by 1 33rd scale, we mean that the wave magnitude, the wave height, is 1 33rd of a full scale system. And then for bigger devices, we can go to their large wave flume. That is longer than a football field. So what do we got here? We got colors and graphs. And yes, and actually, you know, we've got Ian Ammon running this with Professor Ted Brecken. Hey so let's go ahead and talk to them. What's going on here? You control all this, right? Yeah, so what we're seeing is the data that's captured from this test system. So we're seeing the force that's applied to the wave energy device under test, seeing the velocity, acceleration, and position, as well as the, the power input to the system from the linear test bed. It's pretty high-tech stuff, man. Yeah, it's actually a, a very, this entire system, everything represented here from the linear test bed, the system under test, the control system for the linear test bed, this system for testing the electrical properties of the system, all very sophisticated. A lot of work has gone into the development of all of this. That's great. Thank you. Absolutely fascinating.